come on somebody put your hands together and appreciate and the Lord of Lords what a Sunday what a Sunday when we lay our palms before the feet of the Lord that he walks on our efforts the Lord God Almighty creator of the heavens and the earth with his stretch arm and power whom nothing is impossible with him we worship you today we lift our voices the voices that you have given unto us we express our thanksgiving unto you hallelujah somebody say amen indeed say it again amen I wish that you can go to five people and say to them I am in a special Sunday or go and tell somebody tell somebody next to you that you are in a special Sunday what a Sunday, what a Sunday, what a Sunday. It is indeed the Palm Sunday, what a Sunday. We are so very grateful unto the Lord that we chose to be in the presence of the Lord. Wow, wow, wow. You, you can do it, man. Wow, 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 wow. Do it again. Let me hear that. Ma, 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 ma. Ah. Yeah. My goodness. The man has announced his presence. Put your hands together for the Lord and for this man. Bless the Lord. Greet the person that is next to you and say, I appreciate your presence. And I'm so grateful that you are in the service today. We celebrate the Lord together with you. Oh, yes, put your hands together once again. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated for a while, please. I just want to go through some formalities. I, I see that there, there are some empty chairs there. Uh, and it's unlike CTCM in Atridgeville Central. Now, when we said Thursday, it's a holiday. It was not saying that you are not supposed to observe the Palm Sunday. This is a very special week for all of us. Uh, it, it, it is when that we as Christians, we say this is a passion week. It, it is an emotional week for us. Because on Friday we are commemorating the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to warn you that you don't trample on the blood of Jesus Christ by not coming to the service to honor the death of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. It was on a Friday when he hung on a cross. It was on Friday when he was wounded. It was on Friday when they spilled the blood of Jesus. It was on a Friday when they took a spear and they pierced on his side and billows of water billows of blood flew out from his side and he cried out and he said Elohi, Elohi, and Lama Sabachthan when he felt that the father might have deserted him and that's when we are coming together to say that blood was not spilled in vain it was spilled for us to receive redemption to receive forgiveness from god almighty 
Am I talking alone here? I, I, I would have heard you say amen and amen and amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Oh, God has spoken. When he hung on the cross, God was speaking. And we say, Amen. Amen. Can somebody say it again? Amen. Amen. God has spoken. Let that church say, Amen. Come on, somebody help me and say it again. Let the church say all Saturday. Say Amen. God has spoken. Let the church say. So on Friday we are assembling here and the ministers will tell you what dress code we need to have and then we are assembling again on Sunday to come and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. All over the world Christians are assembling in their assemblies to celebrate and commemorate the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are also coming as CTCM to observe those days that are very, very, very important in our lives. Somebody say amen again. So allow me therefore today that I conclude on this subject that I would have expanded for many weeks and many weeks on end but I want that I should conclude today and we are going to be reading in the book of Joshua chapter 24 allow me that we read verse 15 stand on your feet please as we read the holy word of the living God on Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 can I lead you in reading the scriptures, please? And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your forefathers, and the other scripture says your fathers served, that were on the other side of the flood, which is the river Euphrates, or the gods of the Amorites that God was called Chemosh in whose land ye dwell but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord may the Lord bless the reading of his word today I want you if you may please in your own spare time go to Deuteronomy chapter 30 and read verse 19 it also talks about two issues and God says you either choose life or death but he says I encourage you that you choose life so if it would seem evil to serve the Lord here is Joshua standing in front of the nation of Israel and he says choose you this day whom you will serve it tells us therefore that in this life we have been given the power to make choices can I therefore deliver unto you what I have coined today as a topic for you that making choices 
is a skill. Tell your neighbor right now and say making choices takes a skill. Or tell him again. Or tell him. So choice or making decisions takes your willpower. In other words, that you have to exercise your willpower when you make choices. That's why he said to them, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, we will exercise our choice to serve the Lord. May the Lord bless the reading of the word. You may be seated, please. I have spoken to you on this particular subject when I said to you that you need to make choices because God encourages us that we should not be double-minded people. So throughout all epochs of human existence, God has already spoken many a times that we need to exercise the authority that he has granted unto us. And that authority is the authority of making choices. Am I talking too well to you? The authority that has been granted to humankind is the authority of making choices. That we are not going to be led in this life by conditions. We are not going to be led in this life by situations. But God is saying I have ingrained something inside of each one of you. That you are able to arise and make choices. You can make decisions. Because we are not creatures of circumstances. God has made us that we should be able to make circumstances to be our creatures in other words you need to reverse that that not situations are going to lead you conditions are not going to lead you as a human being but you need to take authority over situations i am talking alone here so god is saying to us cease to be deep double-minded in other words you are not a creature that is, it, it is only monsters that are going to be double-minded. But as for you, you need to be single-minded. Somebody say single-minded. Or say it again, single-minded. So in other words, don't be in between. You know, some people when they drink their tea and the tea is good, they say, Hey, Bazi, do you know that I'm so double-minded? Oh, Bazi, I am so in between. Only monsters are in between. But fellow human beings, God has designed them to be single-minded. Or tell your neighbor and say to be single-minded. In other words, you are not going to be tossed about. You don't know which, which man you need to have a relationship with. And you are bringing confusion not only to yourself... But you are also bringing confusion to the people who are around you. In other words, God says, don't be double-minded, but be single-minded. Right now, if I'm talking to you, you know that you are in a relationship. But the relationship, it's upon two people. You said, I don't know who to choose. It's mini, 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 mama, bo. You are too quiet for me. Is because you know that you are involved in that. That you have not made a choice. God says you cannot be double minded. Make a decision and be single minded. I don't know where that come from. The Holy Spirit just dropped it in me. That somebody has got a girlfriend here. In Atridgeville. But somewhere, somehow... In Harankua, they've got another one. And somewhere they have traveled to Devon, they've got another one. And all over where they go, they have got girlfriends all around. 
Let me tell you, if you are practicing that, the Bible says a double-minded person is unstable in all their ways and let them never think that they will achieve anything. So in other words, achievement and success lies in single-mindedness. Whether you think you are clever, you think you are a man about town, that you go to uh, on Wednesday you are there and then on Friday you are somewhere else and you think that you are going to succeed in life God says you have already taken a, for a formula of failure it says let that man never think in other words it must not even cross your mind that you shall achieve anything oh yes you are here we are telling you the truth of God's word I'm talking alone here so once you are tossed about in your life where you have not stood in one area and say I am making a decision it tells you that you are now going into a formula of not succeeding in this life and we spoke to you last week we say the, 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 the area where you find yourself sometimes you are hot and sometimes you are cold that kind of an attitude that kind of a personality that makes you to be tossed about that you they, they, they refer the Bible refers to you as being a lukewarm person that means you are in between we can't tell whether you are on the left or you are on the right. The umabata. In between. The lukewarm Christian. God says, man, that person I cannot tolerate. He says, I will spew them out. So today, let me handle this matter for you. That it is important to make you aware that life and the life that we live in it is a life that is very real some people they think that this life it's a joke they think this life we it's a game we can go and play but I want to deliver and submit to you that this life that we live in it's a very serious life Somebody tell your neighbor and say it's serious. This life is very serious. It needs that you must take it serious. This life is very real. It's the Amagoya. It's real. Regardless that this life always will come and manifest itself as a fork a fork something that you use the utensils that you are you are familiar with it some of you every day your life is life and fork but some people sometimes they see the fork once a week others they even see it only in Christmas but once you look at the fork you are going to see that it carries pertinently two directions so life is a fork that will always come and show its turns into your life it shows you tributaries it shows divergence And I want to come and say to you, if there are tributaries, if there are divergence, God still expects you to make a choice. Because you cannot be in those tributaries at the same time with the same space. Because God has made you single, He expects that you have to be single-minded and make a choice 
which tributary you want to follow. I'm coming to you. You have to train yourself to be single-minded in this life. Because life is so serious. Can you imagine that life does not give you the opportunity to do a rehearsal? Oh, let, let it sink. No rehearsal. This is how life serious it is. So, once you look at the tributary and you need to make a choice, you make a choice. Because life will not say rehearse first and then you can make a decision. So you cannot rehearse which direction you need to take. When you do a drama, it's easy. They say come for rehearsals. And then when you want to also to come and sing, they tell you and say come for rehearsals. But as for life, once you are launched into this life, it becomes so serious. This church is too quiet for me. I only hear Mama Vero say yes and yes. What's happening to you? So we are constantly in this life faced with a barrage of confusion. This life will come and hit you with chaos. In other words, you will be faced daily on lack of clarity. I wish I can close my Bible here. There are commanding voices on daily basis that will follow you and say make particular decisions. Take particular directions. Am I talking alone? On daily basis. Voices that are going to come to you. They will speak and some voices will be so strong to push you to a particular direction. Now, once you come to an environment and the environment comes and says, hey, I have been in, in some particular, if you know that you, you are in, in, in this class where the, the hostesses are coming and they are pushing a trolley and they are saying chicken or beef, then you know that you are in a bad class. Chicken or beef, they are quiet because they have not been in the aeroplane. Chicken or beef? Why can't they even say there is fish? That tells you that the options that you have are limited. If you come to a, 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 a place where they tell you and say coffee or tea. In other words, this is all that you can choose. You can't go and say, do you have a cool drink? They have already told you, say, make a decision. It's either coffee or tea. But I'm happy with those kind of environments where they don't give you other options. You have to, in other words, they are saying, make a choice. It's either tea or coffee. You can't say, any and any. Immediately you are that person and say, engwe le engwe. you are in trouble because you are allowing the situation to choose for you. You are allowing other people to make a choice for you. God says, no, no, no. I want you to make a choice. Oh, arise on your feet and say, I'm about to make a choice. Say it again, I'm about to make a choice. So when life comes and say, make a decision, decide. You may be seated. You see, choice tells you something. 
that you are about to reach far reaching consequences because the choice you make might have those kind of consequences and those consequences can affect you as a person in other words once you have made a decision the results thereof can affect you and can affect even your future but can i deliver to you that certain certain choices that you make will even affect your family yeah there are decisions that can affect your family your family has made such an investment in your life you are where you are right now because of the investments that they have made but a certain choice that you can make can dismantle every investment that they have made in your life i don't want to go somewhere else where i know where i know that you don't have authority nobody has granted you authority to go and make a child but once you can decide to go and make a child without any authority have been given unto you in other words you are making a child out outside of wedlock this will affect you for the rest of your life here on earth Ah, yeah, no, I deserve a hand here. <laughs> to make a child, you are not coerced into it. Oh, Mungar, why is a kid's work a robetele and not young root? Keep on a fella kiss and son like a robetele. No, you are not telling the truth. You have made a decision to undress yourself, you made a decision to sleep on that bed. All right. Can I be your friend, please? Don't look at me funny. I am your friend. And when I'm telling you the truth right now, it's because I want to build your future. So in the text that we have just read, Joshua was now old speculating that he was about 110 years old and joshua have witnessed certain tendencies amongst the people of israel and he needed to draw from them the single-mindedness from this nation they were living amongst the Amorites. And the Amorites were so influential at that time. And he sensed that Israel is going to be so much pressed. They will be pressed. And they might even go to a situation where they would want to conform and they would want to assimilate to the culture of the Amorites. And he reminded them that God always, even when we left Egypt, even when we were in the wilderness, even now when we arrived in the land of the Amorites, God has always insisted that we should be people who are making choices we cannot be in between sometimes we go we take the culture of the Amorites sometimes we go and we take the art uh, the culture that God has given to us he said no you can't be double-minded I am now calling upon you that you need to be single-minded can I suggest to you today that we also live in a time and in space where multiple influence we receive influential voices 
every day and these voices are very bold and bold they are telling us what to do how to live how to operate how to move what to say and what to feel these voices on daily basis are trying to achieve something from us through media our televisions the social media the magazines even the billboards etc all these are drawing our attention either that they are selling something or they are telling us something that's why Joshua said I have made a decision that the culture around me would not define and dictate for me and my family I have made a decision I've made a choice I am asking you are you receiving a teaching that comes from Joshua that your life must not be dictated or defined but what is around you he saw how aggressive and also not just only aggressive let the students take this word how belligerent they follow you aggressively because they want you to make a decision and you know that your values are not based in what they are trying to pull from you why do you follow because they want to mold you differently from your values i won't be reading this scripture for you but in genesis chapter 18 from verse 17 to verse 19 abraham came to have a particular experience where he lived the culture of sodom and gomorrah was so powerful that even some of his relatives were taken by that culture but it tells us it says but abraham stood on the principles oh i i i, I wish i can talk regardless of the press the culture is so pressing but regardless of that god comes and he speaks he tells us how he commands abraham that i know that abraham would not follow this particular culture abraham is decisive what about us that we will say to ourselves hey, uh, i don't know how it happened i don't know why i am doing this abraham was decisive he knew that he has decided that the culture that surrounds him is not going to dictate terms to him and can i suggest to you that in this life you can't say you are clever that's why you are you are on the fence we are not designed by god to be people who stand on the fence when you stay on the fence you are not going to experience growth in your life and you will not experience development in your life growth and development only comes when you begin to make choices 
So I'm appealing to you that you move away from the fence. Take a stance. Let, we, let us know whether you are carrying a blue color or you are carrying a red color. Because once you make a choice, you carry the ability to identify sides. There are sides all around you. But when you make a choice, that tells us that you have the ability to identify, underline that, the ability to identify sides. Can I go further? It tells us that you carry the ability to evaluate options. There are options that are coming and these options are competing and appealing. They are a stimuli. They appeal for your attention. The moment that you have made a choice, it tells us that you know how to evaluate options. Am I too heavy for you? How many of saying I hear you men of God? Oh, I'm impressed with your hands. Can I even hear your voice say amen? amen. Say it again, amen. amen. So, once you are able to identify options, it tells us that you are able to know and you have considered the consequences. In other words, you have gone ahead to see that if I take this particular direction, these are the consequences that are going to come upon me. Is that word consequences heavy for you? In other words, if I take this direction, I know what's going to happen to my life. So when you make choices, it tells us that we have already evaluated the consequences. That's why if you have evaluated your consequences, you have considered the consequences, it tells us therefore that you will make informed choices. I'm talking alone here. You can, you make informed choices. You can't in this life as the life is so serious, that, that the life is so real, that you don't know that the choices that you have made are serious. <laughs> Even if you have not made the choice, you are pushed by the wind. The consequences when they meet you are not going to say, ah, step aside, you have been pushed by the wind. No. It tells me that in this life you need to make informed choices. It tells me where do you go to consult for you to make informed choices? I can't, my man, I don't understand my people. I, I can't go and want to make particular business decisions and I go to somebody who has never handled a business. No, I can't go. The, the mere fact when I enter to, to the room where that person is, they don't have shoes on. It tells me that, yeah, I'm telling you, how can I go and consult to them when I want to be in a shoe business? And they are not wearing shoes. And in fact, they tell me, if I enter into that room, I must take off my shoes. And I think that I will succeed. Honey, this life is too long. Where I am going to travel, there are thistles. Where I'm going to travel, there are thorns. I need my shoes on. I need my boots on. I'm talking alone here. I wish I could go further on that. For me to, in, to, to make informed choices, it's going to take a skill that will make me succeed in this life. How many say we hear you, men of God? Once you have developed this skill, this skill will help you 
that naturally you will be able to navigate through various situations and challenges in this life. Whatever this life will throw at you, you will be able to navigate. Whatever the life is bringing challenges to you, you will be able to ward it off because you have learned this skill you have developed it. You have always been making choices. You don't allow circumstances to make choices for you. Hi Muruti. Keleka re ke levela di kevetsa hi. Hi di kevetsela din tumile somewhere. So you are making decisions based on what you see. The calves that you see are making make honey make decisions. Let it come from the depth of your heart. Let your soul direct you. Yeah, no, hey, Ibima, Sefi say Ibima. Yeah, it hits them. Muruti, Hente Otsamaya, Uya Kwa Lekwa, Leoka Fika Kwa West Africa, Ibile Nabo Nababa Tel Leva Kebo Nakeba Batlan. Once you have the skill of making choices, it will equip, equip you wherever you are. That you will be able to make responsible choices and you will be able to solve problems effectively. I'm talking alone here. The skill to identify different sides, assess options, consider consequences, and make informed choices can make you enjoy independence and autonomy from any mass hysteria. When they come the opposite direction. Why do you join them? God says, I want to give you the spirit of independence. I want to give you the spirit of autonomy. <laughs> Must not be influenced by mass crowd. Well, we now if it is late, we are meeting. I wish you but to me never ring. But we love you. How fit are we now? Many sales. So we are not God has not designed us like that. He says we must make choices. It must be informed. We must make decisions. So once you have an understanding of the consequences of making decisions it becomes a crucial aspect in your life that you will always be able to make choices so Joshua knew that the majority is not always right that's why he called them he said as for me I am not part of the majority. I have learned this thing that even when we were sent as spies, 12 of us, when we returned, the 10 which were the majority, when they said otherwise, we decided to go and Caleb and say it differently because we have assessed the situation. I am saying to you, God has given you the power to be able to assess the situation. Don't go because the majority says this. Muruti Baba Nata by Etsa So. Le nake disaiti le hore ye tseso. Mang le mang mo straten sarona o ye tseso. Lisa. Lisa. That's the song that you sing. God 
God wants you to make a decision. That tells me that to make a decision, you need to go and seek the face of God. You need to pray. You need to hear what the word of the Lord is saying. I'm asking you that your choice should be reviewed. How will that choice impact on others? How will it impact on the community? Honey, even it doesn't matter whether there's a car that is parked outside and this person is coming to do a checking on you and that person wants more extraordinary and he says before i go you have to give me something i am asking you child of god i am pleading with you don't ever be moved by the car that is standing outside he might have borrowed the car from his cousin and he's visiting you don't ever do that and say stand your ground and say as for me and my house we shall serve the lord i'm not going to open this thing for you until i am not going to open it for you until we now this is what the value that you stand on you stand on the value of the word of god refuse child of god this person has got nothing he wants to steal your future that's the language of the devil all he knows is to steal to kill and to destroy how many of the futures have been stolen being killed being destroyed stand your ground child of god what makes you to stand your ground is because you understand your goals that's number one you know where you are going and number two you understand your values you can't live this life wishy-washy god will live this life with values and these values must dictate to you what choices you make there are many of the people that we are preaching to we have a, a prison ministry we go to the prisons we speak to them some of them when we ask them what happened what is it that led you to be here is because of mass hysteria i wanted also to have what my neighbor has they were pushed by circumstances i am asking you that you arise in this life have values and if you see that this direction does not lead you to your values change the direction and it will become easy for you to make the right decision in this life i give it to you it's up to you you can decide and say ah kokereking el banya go retsa di barim kokereking el i want to look at you if you say we want to make you a bar after 7 years i want to see where you would be i am trying to deliver the future for you don't be like pigs and and swines and trample on the pearls take the value that is coming out of this message and build your future based on that somebody say yay yeah. yeah. say it again yay yeah. yeah. arise on your feet please It's okay if you don't clap hands for me. It's okay. I'm not moved. God is speaking to us. God is telling us that the world is pressing us too much. We must not allow the world to come and have an ounce of us in life. 
We need to say we are independent. We need to say we are autonomous. We decide right now to say we are packaging ourselves to move according to the values that God has enshrined for us. Honey, I'm begging you by the mercy of God, make a choice. This service is asking you to make a decision. Make it, child of God. It doesn't matter whether they don't see you. It is at night. Decide like Joseph and say, I will not temper. Decide. It doesn't matter whether the lady or father is in the house and nobody is in the house. It's only you and that lady. Decide like Joseph. You see, God sees the values they see more years than the pressure that we are experiencing they see more like that you see if you would have done that he would not have been the prime minister the first prime minister the first foreign prime minister in a foreign land it would not have happened joseph became the prime minister of egypt the devil wanted to steal what was in the future what is in your future is enormous child it doesn't matter of the inconvenience that you are going through it doesn't matter of the hardships that you are going through it doesn't matter of the difficulties that you are going through your future is secured in the hands of the lord Hallelujah. The God and say oh Lord help me which choice I need to make choice is something that is activated by you you have to make a decision you have to make a choice I am going to pray together with you right now if you are here you are under the sound of my voice and you are saying life is too valuable for me I need to make a decision I need to make a choice right now i receive the empowerment from the holy spirit i'm going to move right now but you can ask the lord and say lord open my eyes let me be able to see which is the right way that i need to take that you can ask and say lord open my eyes we are about to pray right now where are the prayer warriors we are about to pray right now you can ask the lord and say lord open my eyes open my spiritual eyes let me know even the friendship that i have right now is it the friendship that you have ordained oh lord god i must push away from this friendship you might be in a relationship and you are not sure you need to ask lord to open your eyes that you should know and detect whether this is the right relationship oh lord god almighty open my eyes oh. let me be able to see the same way that lord god the seventh mandrova surubakaria the seventh of the prophet was opened his eyes were opened he was able to see the same way lord open my eyes let me be able 
to see in the name of Jesus. The church is in prayer. Conquer us. You are in prayer. Maya Rababa. Church is in prayer. The church is in prayer. Maria Baba Raba Baba Mandro Soroba Karia. I can hear you. I can hear you. The church is in prayer. The church is in prayer. Arise right now and pray for yourself so that you don't sabotage your family. You don't sabotage your future. You don't sabotage your community. Arise and pray. Let the Lord open your eyes that you be able to see which right road to take in the name of Jesus. Somebody you are praying, you are asking the Lord to open your eyes to see which path not to take, to see which career to go to, to see what business to go to, to see. Come on, church, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on and be in prayer. Be in prayer. Mandro Sira. You are lifting up your voice. You are asking. Hey! 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 Sula Bakaria Babara. Maria Babara Bakas. Fired by the Holy Spirit. Bakaya Moshande. Riva Baba Moshata. Come on, somebody, you are praying. Jesus. Hey, Andrasia I sense the anointing is so strong. I need to right now that the Lord should be able to make us to break any yoke that is in your life. If there are people who are under the sound of my voice, you need a breakthrough from the Lord. You feel heavy and you need that the Lord should offload this yoke in your life. Don't go away after the service. I want you to come and line up here. All the pastors that are here under the sound of my voice, I would want you that you come and help me. We are going to be praying for these people. There shall be a breakthrough in your life. You see, Palm Sunday, it's a special Sunday. Next weekend, this whole place will be chock a block, it will be packed. But Palm Sunday, palms represent the releasing of the aroma. The Lord must release the aroma, the influence, which direction you need to take. Influence you which direction you need to take. So these palms must release that aroma. Am I talking to someone? Am I talking to someone? Palms, they've got medicinal qualities. Medicinal qualities. God must come on this Sunday and heal whatever situation has tempered with your life the lord must heal that situation let the palms be able to release that am i talking to someone right now the palms can can, can be able to grow into 
higher and higher proportions. I am saying to you right now that we are going to pray that the Lord Jehovah should be able to expose you to ideas of business, to be able to expose that you grow and be growing and growing and be much higher and higher and higher in the name of the Lord. This is the Sunday where we are going to be praying for you that the Lord Jehovah should be able to give unto you that kind of an anointing, the anointing of a palm tree. Somebody say, I hear the Lord. Say it again, I hear the Lord. So you, you, you remain and you don't go away. We will be praying for you. We will take time. We are going to anoint you with oil and the Lord Jehovah will do something great into your life. Be seated for a while, please. Let me allow the ministers to come and make some conclusive remarks.